The Tulsa Police Department under scrutiny after releasing a video showing police officers taunting a black woman in distress. I want to warn you, the video you're about to see is very disturbing. We will show you what happened to 70-year-old LaDonna Paris, uh, who locked herself in a bathroom uh, while possibly having a mental health crisis. All right, folks, watch this. This is going to be so fun. Dark blue or dark I'll go to jail. I don't mind. I don't want to stop it. Ah, Push your other arm. Give it your other arm now. Ah, ah. Oh, boy, my shepherd. My boy. You need to use a light up. 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 That is so nasty. Yeah, this was unnecessary. You're right. We don't have to do any of this. That's fine. I'm really, really fine. Okay. Oh, shit. Let's clean the blood. <coughs> Let's clean the blood of this. <coughs> oh, shit. Can we clean up the blood? Yeah, we're going to have to clean the blood. Do not kick him. Do not kick him. No, he is. Do not kick him. Sit up. LH, this is not right. This is not right, sir. Really My grandfather is. Yep. Get up. All right, there's three choices. Thank you. Thank you. Can we get him, sir? This is not right. I said sit down. Okay. Sit down. I will. I will. Okay. You're hurting me. Please. Joining me now, the attorney for Ms. Paris, Demario Salomon Simmons from Tulsa, Oklahoma, two of her children, uh, Kendra Jackson uh, in Texas, Chris Williams uh, in Arkansas. Uh, first and foremost, um, sorry, you, of course, had to see that video there, uh, Kendra and Chris. Um, does your, was this a mental breakdown? What was this? What actually happened uh, here? Um, well, well, thank you for oh, having sorry, us go on. Ahead. Oh, go ahead. But thank you for having us no. on, uh, Roland. Uh, I don't know if that was to be. Uh, no, 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 that was actually to Kendra or Chris. Kendra, okay, Chris? that's fine. Yeah. Um, so mom had... Um, had been having hallucinations early that morning. I want to say about 3 a.m. She was texting the family. Um, she was seeing things. And we had been trying to get in touch with her for several hours. Uh, eventually, we were able to locate her. She was at school. She was at seminary um, where they were very concerned uh, about her behavior and had called me. Um, and I had called my brother, Chris, to, to come to the school because I was out of town. And that's kind of where it started. Um, and then the, the paramedics were called out to her school because they recognized that she was having uh, an episode uh, and they did not want to put her behind a wheel. So that's that's how it started. Chris, was this the first time um, this is she's ever done this? Um, it's not the first time that that she's done this. It's not the first time that this has happened. But, you know, as if you have someone close to you that's dealing with mental illness. You know, it's a sliding scale. So she lives on her own and she's productive. Um, but this is something that she has been diagnosed with later in life. And I was actually headed, um, I was headed to Tulsa from Little Rock to try to help and try to intervene whenever all of this was happening. And I didn't get there in time. And by the time I got there, I, I drove around and looked for her in Tulsa and couldn't find her. And I just happened to log on to the uh, Tulsa County website to see if, by chance, if they took her to jail, if there was a misunderstanding, because I knew she was scared. So I didn't know what might have transpired. And so I just happened to log on and saw that they had taken her to jail. And that's where we, that's where it started. Uh Demario, this is a perfect example when people have talked about defund the police of shifting resources away from police officers going to the scene of mental uh, health issues 
uh, mental breakdowns and having professionals. Uh, and, uh, and, and, but the beginning of the video was what also was disturbing, that these cops were essentially taunting her, laughing at her. Yeah, Roland, I mean, they were tasing, uh, saying, hey, you're going to get tased. I don't know if it showed on the video, but the officer, Wani, who we, uh, we're calling to be immediately fired, she was saying, I love my job. This is going to be so much fun. And she says over and over and over that she, that Miss Paris was 85. And 85 in Tulsa uh, police speak means she's mental. She's having a mental health episode. They're also on video saying, we know she's having a mental health episode, and we have the CR team, the CERT team, critical response team, but we called them, but they're, you know, they're busy. They can't come here. So they knew for a fact that she was having this mental health breakdown, and they treated her like less than an animal. They treated her worse than they would treat a dog. And they not only did they do this to her, did they cause her physical injuries, but they put seven bogus charges on her. They charged her with assault and battery on police officer. They charged her with resisting arrest. They charged her with animal cruelty. They charged her with attempted arson. Completely bogus. Took her to jail. They took her to the Tulsa County Jail. They didn't give her any help. They knew she was having a mental health breakdown. They took her to jail and rolling. And for everyone that's listening, need to understand, she spent 30 days in jail, two weeks in solitary confinement, as they kept saying they were going to let her out because they knew she was needed mental help. They never let her out of jail. 30 days in jail, two weeks in solitary confinement over some bogus trumped up charges. This is what the Tulsa Police Department does to black people on a daily basis here in Oklahoma. They started with the 1921 Tulsa race massacre and they have continued to this very day. And as you stated, Roland, this is a perfect example of why we need less funding for police and more funding for better services for people, but we need more accountability for people like this officer that violate the constitutional rights and the basic dignity and human rights and respect of people like LaDonna Paris, a great grandmother, a seminary student, an author, a very accomplished woman treated like that on camera is an outrage. The, the thing that is, is, is crazy to me, uh, Chris, spending that long a time in jail, for what? Yeah. Um, real quickly, just to give you a little idea of what happened, I, I had been corresponding with the person that was over uh, the mental health area in the jail. And she told me, she told me that she was taking notes and she was going to be going to the judge before the arraignment. And I shouldn't have to worry about it because she'll be transferred to the Tulsa Behavioral Center for uh, or the Tulsa Center for Behavioral Health. So she could get some help because he really shouldn't even be there. And so November 1st came the day of her arraignment and she never went before the judge. And my wife contacted me and said, have you looked online and checked at the updates? And her court date got pushed back to December 1st at that point. So at that point, we were just like, she's just going to be sitting here. And it's just it's just, and I just want to say one more thing, Roland. I, I wasn't prepared. I knew that something wasn't right whenever I requested the body cam footage, but I received the body cam footage in the mail and I just started to comb through the hours of footage and I couldn't believe the stuff that I saw. It was sadistic the way that the way that she handled the situation, the way that she laughed and mocked my mom, knowing that, um, as DeMario said, that she was in mental distress and the other officers didn't intervene. Um, but she just, she had a great time. It's the only way I can say it. Kendra, what do you want to happen to these police officers? I, I want them to be held accountable. Obviously, I want her uh, to be fired. Um, and my fear is that she, if she knew she was on body cam and if she was treating my mother in this way, um, someone mentally ill, you know, how does she treat people when the body cam is not there? And so extremely concerning. So she does not need to be in the Tulsa, Tulsa Police Department um, serving and protecting the citizens of Tulsa. Um, I do want the other officers held account. I think we've learned in, in a recent past that officers that just sit idly by when other officers uh, use and abuse other citizens, that they need to be held account as well. But certainly she needs to lose her job. Uh, DeMario, what has actually happened? Anybody put on suspension, desk duty, administrative leave, or nothing? Absolutely not, Roland. This officer, and her name is uh, Ronnie 
Car- Carissa, I think that's how you spell, say it. This Carissa. officer has not has not had any type of discipline to our knowledge. And in fact, Roland, last week, the city of Tulsa Police Department came out and said everything this officer did was his end policy. And the city of Tulsa mayor came out with a statement and stated that he has full trust and belief in the investigation of the police department. In other words, they are condoning this particular behavior against Ms. Paris and black people here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. This is why I get so fired up about this, because if this can happen to Ms. Paris, a great grandmother having a mental health breakdown that they knew she was having on video, they knew they were being videotaped and they still acted like animals and savages. Imagine what they do every single day to black and brown people around this country and this city when they think they can get away with it. So that's why we're calling for her to be immediately fired. We're calling for these other officers to be disciplined and we're calling for the Department of Justice to come in and open up a civil rights violation investigation against this officer. She intentionally violated the rights of LaDonna Paris. They must be held accountable. We will not stop until we see these officers and the city of Tulsa held accountable for what they've done in LaDonna Paris. And I hope everyone that's listening will go and sign our petition telling the city of Tulsa mayor, Mayor G.T. Bynum, to fire this officer immediately. Here is the statement from the Tulsa Police Department. Uh, The video that was sent uh, to my attention is edited down from 90 minutes to just under six minutes. To be clear, the banter between the officers outside of the presence of the suspect can be received as unprofessional and has been addressed with the officers. The overall actions of the officers and the way in which the call was handled is within the policies of the Tulsa Police Department. In summary, we were called to a location by staff to remove an individual who was trespassing. The suspect used an aerosol can and lighter in an unsuccessful attempt set a fire. Officers attempted to call our community response team to the location, but they were unable to respond. After 34 minutes of unsuccessful verbal coaxing, Paris still refused to open the door and surrender. Officers forced entry into the small bathroom and quickly secured Paris with minimal force. When loading Paris into a vehicle, she kicked an officer. During and after transport, Paris was compliant with officers. Uh, Chris, you're shaking your head. I am. I am. Um, Well, first off, what they initially said in that statement about it being condensed down to six minutes. Listen, regardless of the span of time of the complete body footage, the the, the officers did what you saw on a six-minute video. Um, And it's disgusting and it's vile. And, I mean, without getting too granular with it, um, a lot of that stuff that they're saying is ridiculous. And it's just so sad that I'm not surprised, but it's so sad that they're not willing to step up and hold her to account. Um. Demario, uh, last point here. When you hear, um, when you hear them say uh, that, well, it was edited down. But also, shouldn't it be a concern to a police department that your community response team didn't get 34 minutes and they still hadn't arrived? Um, that's a problem. Yeah. Also, with that statement, Roland, they completely did both face lying. Number one, the call from the Habitat for Humanity. They knew Ms. Paris, and they were concerned about her. They knew she was having a mental health breakdown, and they communicated that to the police. She was not trespassing. Number two, a week uh, uh, around the same time that they said they waited for 45 minutes, they had a standoff with a white individual that was having a mental health breakdown who had a sword who was trying to get into the next uh, apartment next door had been b- trying to get in and stab his the next person in the apartment. They waited seven hours for that to let that situation calm down. So this talk that they're trying to say it, they needed more time, it's completely bogus. They needed to do what was right by wait for the community resource team. Because another aspect of this story is they had already had some contact with Ms. Paris at her seminary. This was well known that she was having this mental health breakdown. And I know they were saying, well, they this was something that was within policy. If this is within policy, as you always say, Roland, not only does policy need to change, but also shows that this is the pattern, practice, and custom and culture of the Tulsa Police Department, which was actually stated by the city council last Wednesday when this issue came up. So this city, this particular uh, police department 
We need the Department of Justice to come in and open a pattern and practice investigation immediately. They killed Terrence Crutcher with his hands up in the air. Nothing happened for that. They killed Joshua Harvey, tased him 27 times, another client of mine. Nothing happened for that. They killed Ollie Brooks, a black man that they came in and tased a dozen times, unarmed. Nothing happened after that. They've done LaDonna Paris, treated her like trash, bloodied her, put her in, hospital, put her in this, uh, jail for over a month. Bogus charges that's been dismissed by a judge we need the Department of Justice to come in. We need this officer fired, and we need some real accountability and justice. All right. Folks, I certainly appreciate it. Thank you so very much. Uh, DeMario, uh, Solomon Simmons, uh, 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 Kendra uh, uh, Jackson, as well as Chris Williams. Thank you so very much. All right, folks, back to our Mark unfiltered video in just one moment. Folks, Black Star Network is here. A real um, revolutionary right now. Yeah. Support this man, Black Media. He makes sure that our stories are told. I thank you for being the voice of Black America, Rollins. I love y'all. All momentum we have now, we have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black Owned Media and something like CNN. You can't be Black Owned Media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig?